Alrighty, folks. Um, thank you again for joining us for the Craft Brewery Startup Workshop 2 uh, webinar. Uh, again, my name is Johanna Lounsbury. I've got the poll up right now, the responses from you folks. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see the, the landscape of what you're interested in getting into. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'm kind of intrigued by the 17% other responses. Um, and uh, I would really appreciate if uh, those of you who typed other could put something into the, um, the chat box and explain what your other ideas are, um, whether that be, I'm not really sure, I just think this is a really cool class, or um, whether it's, um, I want a food cart brewery combination, something to that sort. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the webinar, however, and uh, talk to you today about what you can expect from the course. So today what we're going to be talking about is what people can expect from the course, which is going to be launching on April 21st. Um, as I said before, my name is Johanna Lounsbury. I'm a project manager at Professional and Continuing Education. And I am also the coordinator for the course, so I'm actually helping with logistics and creation. And I'll be there on site in Portland for uh, the day-to-day -day activities and making sure everything goes well. Um, I've got two co-presenters today. I've got um, Aaron Brodniak, who will be a course instructor. Um, I'm going to allow him to speak uh, more to that later on in the webinar, as well as Dick Cantwell, who is also a course instructor. Um, all right, so. The agenda today is um, I'm going to be talking about the course format and the location as well as the learning outcomes you can expect from the course. Um, there's going to be a slide on uh, Oregon State University and my unit, Professional and Continuing Education. Um, but I'm going to skim over that pretty quickly so we can get into the meat of the course. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the instructors you can expect to see at the course. Um, and I'm going to start talking on uh, about the workshop overview and course outcomes. And then Aaron and Dick Cantwell are going to finish that off by talking about um, the topics they'll be covering in their portion of the um, online and the first couple of days of on-site in Portland. Um, just a quick note, this, this entire webinar is going to be recorded and we're going to be posting a link to that video and audio recording on our website. That should be available. Um, we're aiming for early next week. So if you want to go back and refer to this um, or share it around, feel free to. That should be available um, early next week. Um, so I'm going to go over this just really quickly. I think the most important thing that you might want to pull from this slide is that we are one of the nation's uh, two fermentation science research programs. And uh, we are actually going to be holding a few more courses led by Tom Shellhammer, who is the head of the fermentation science program here um, in May, June, and July. And the topics of those courses are going to be brewing analytics course as well as a beer proficiency course for the public. Um, let's see. Uh, so this workshop is a little bit unique in the sense that it is a hybrid workshop. So the first two and a half weeks are going to be taught online, and then you're going to spend four days on site in Portland, Oregon. Um, the online portion uh, requires a three hour per week time commitment, and those three hours will consist of assignments um, and readings. So basically that's kind of the full commitment you can expect during one of those weeks, give or take. Um, the on-site portion is going to be taught over a weekend, uh, Saturday through Monday from 8.30 to 4 p.m., so a full day. And then Tuesday is going to end a little bit early with a brewer's panel. Uh, the course location will be at Widner Brothers Brewing Company in Portland. And uh, workshop attendees um, are so far, the people who have signed up are from around the nation. We've got people from uh, Texas, New York, New York, Arizona, Oregon so far. We have interest from Pennsylvania and Massachusetts as well. Um, so what you can expect is uh, people from all over the nation, potentially people uh, from, from other countries as well. We had three international students at the last craft brewery workshop. Um, you can expect a fast-paced, comprehensive workshop. There's going to be a lot of information in just a couple of days, so it'll be a very productive um, couple of days on site and a few weeks online. Um, the instructors are going to be brewery owners, uh, brewers, suppliers, and regulators, 
and uh, there will be a chance for networking throughout the entire workshop as well as um, on the optional brewer's dinner which will take place on Monday night. We're looking at Bridgeport Brewing Company for that. Um, just a word on Portland, Oregon. Uh, it's a big beer city. There are 72 breweries in the Portland metro area. Um, currently it has the most breweries of any city in the world. Um, so the benefit of that is you get class during the day and homework at night. You can go out and enjoy the, the fruits of labor of the brewers of, or, of Portland. And you can also um, go check out the di many different styles of brew pubs and uh, breweries out there. Um, it's also a food and food cart mecca. Um, one little kind of uh, a neat little tidbit about Oregon, about Portland, it's the only major U.S. city to have a dormant volcano within city limits, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's in the gorgeous Pacific Northwest, so might as well make a longer trip out of it, enjoy some of the mountains and the ocean. Um, so uh, here's a list of the instructors you can expect to see in the workshop. Um, Dick Cantwell and Aaron Brodniak are going to be talking later uh, in this um, in this webinar about their portion of the course, which will be the online portion in the first two days, Saturday and Sunday. Um, on the uh, on Monday, you'll be uh, you'll be learning from Duke Tufty, who is a lawyer uh, based in the Portland area, and he. Uh, regularly assists brewers with starting up their brewery uh, with the permitting process and also uh, with the regulation process. Um, Terry Ferrendorf is an institution from Portland. She um, is the founder of the Pink Boot Society, um, which is a uh, an international network of women brewers, but she also works for the Country Malt Group and she's going to be there talking about uh, the malts and hops market and also um, sourcing ingredients. Uh, James Koblish works for BrewBev, which is a company that supplies equipment for brewers, and he'll be talking to you about how to select the equipment you'll need for your particular needs. Um, and on the final day, we're going to have a brewers panel for about three and a half hours. And so far we have the CEO and founding brewer of Ninkasi Brewery in uh, Eugene, Oregon, as well as the two beers founding brewer and CEO from Seattle who will be uh, present and taking questions. We're also going to be adding to that. I, I really want to try and find a well-rounded group of um, brewers who have all types of si and sizes of breweries to, to represent. Um, the industry there. So bring your questions. Uh, it should be interesting to hear the different perspectives. Um, let's see. So uh, these are the topics that you can expect from the workshop in April and May. So um, understand brewing industry trends, uh, specifically in your area. Um, again, in your area, recognizing the opportunities for um, what what is out there um, and for your particular ideas. Uh, you can discover elements of a successful craft brewery company and management culture. You'll actually discover elements of a few different successful craft brewery companies from the instructors there, and you'll be able to kind of explore your own ideas and kind of test their feasibility in the classroom setting. Um, let's see. So it is going to be an interactive course. There's going to be a lot of small group activities, one-on-one -on -one coaching, hands-on research and development, as well as a lot of networking. Um, with the experienced brewers and founders, regulation experts, ingredients and equipment suppliers, as well as your fellow classmates. Um, and again, the last day panel is going to address topics that, uh, whatever questions you have, but also topics that come up in class that we want to continue on to the last day. Um, what we really want you to take away from this workshop is to understand and successfully execute the steps it takes to open a brewery, whatever size that is whatever location is. Um, try and find something that works for you. Um, have a realistic startup business plan um, based on what you've gleaned from the workshop. Uh, learn about the trends of the malt and hops markets, things that are going to impact your, your price um, and your wholesale. Um, gain an understanding of the equipment for your needs. Uh, know which permits you need to be thinking about and how to handle any legal issues that may arise and also to develop your industry network. Um, so without much ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass um, the, the webinar on to Aaron Brodniak and let him talk a little bit about his portion of the course. Um, um, a little bit about me. 
Um, I am a former brewer for Pyramid. I was the head brewer there. I transitioned from the Coast Guard into the brewing world, so I started at the ground level and worked sorry, myself hey, up. Aaron, sorry, one minute. Um, after that, I was the I regional brewer for a chain of brew pubs called Alcatraz, um, which I don't know if there's many of those functioning right now due to change of ownership and uh, things such as that. So I have a, a varied experience. Currently what I've been doing is consulting and I just finished up my master's degree in management. So I'm applying some of those skills to help start up breweries. So a great venue for me to help people is this particular workshop. Real briefly, the online content for two weeks will consist of assignments, readings, and discussion questions. And really what this is set to do is get you ready for class. So that'll be more valuable and useful for you. Um, we're going to get you started with some excerpts uh, from Dick's book, some things that I've written, and some current events. Um, and what we would like to have people do is, before you come to class, have a outline of your business plan and an executive summary. And we'll be there online with you to help guide you towards that. Um, and with that, I'll hand it off to the next slide. So <clears throat> these are just some of the things that we'll be uh, that we'll be treating in the course of all this. And as Aaron said, we'll make some passages from from my book available. Um, I wasn't on earlier, so I wasn't able to introduce myself. I'm Dick Cantwell, one of the founders of Elysian Brewing Company in Seattle. Uh, we've actually opened five different breweries over over the years, uh, so we have a varied experience with uh, uh, different sized operations from a very small brew pub, about 75 seats, and a three-barrel brewery up to our production facility, which we've been running for the last two years. Uh, this list of topics just sort of gives an idea of the breadth of some of the material that we'll be covering, uh, because there really is, um, you know, a new increasingly sophisticated level to to the business of craft brewing you know back when people were starting it up in the 70s and 80s uh, it was a lot more feasible to come out with something that was far less refined than what's essential today so I think we have to uh, as Aaron says we hope that people will bring a fairly well developed plan and sort of uh, idea to the course and we'll be able to uh, cover some of the things that uh, 20 years ago weren't even weren't even on people's radar. Stuff like distribution, branding, and a lot of other strategic thinking. Um, there's a lot of must-cover stuff, and we'll take it in kind of a custom way because obviously we will be reacting to what you all bring to the table. And uh, so that's that's a really great thing because you know in the book I had to had to be fairly general at times because. You know, I didn't have any individual in front of me, so uh, we have 50 states worth of differences of uh, legalities and all that kind of stuff. And and with the one-on-one, -on -one, the office uh, hour kind of things, we'll be able to uh, treat people's uh, plans and and notions individually. Um, and just as the book uh, was supposed to not necessarily be absolutely comprehensive in any single area, uh, the idea was that I wanted to provoke thought and get people. Uh, aware of some of the resources that they can look to to develop their plans and that's the kind of approach we want to take too I think because uh, we want to help people develop their plans and enhance their projects themselves uh, not just uh, come up with a, a decent piece of paper that will help raise money but uh, treat many of the different areas of, of developing the actual business All right. Um, well, I'll speak briefly. Um, just just going back to the online coursework, uh, what that's intended to do is kind of give you, if you will, a 30,000 foot view of your business. Um, and then moving forward into the classroom is definitely an opportunity to drill down into each aspect of your plan and get further insights from myself and Dick and then later on the other instructors. Yeah, because the business plan is, you know, an essential thing. I mean, there's a proliferation of projects out there, and uh, you have to have show not just competence, but but individuality and differentiation in it. Uh, so we will help you, uh, you know, pr present the thing well, and uh, make sure that uh, 
your your plans are the ones that uh, people take seriously. So um, there are a lot of business uh, there are a lot of opportunities, uh, and I think uh, once again the market has changed a great deal. Uh, opportunity you know, opportunities can be something as simple as finding a perfect location right off the bat, uh, or recognizing a dearth of competition in uh, in a needy area. Or interestingly, uh, these days, I think um, almost perversely, op there can be opportunity in a mature market. You know, I think uh, there's been a lot of thought over the last several years that places like Washington, Oregon, Northern California are oversaturated. Uh, but I think you know you have to recognize that there's also a great deal of sophistication on the part of potential consumers. Uh, I mean, I what I can't help remembering is that. Uh, Full Sail Brewing uh, originally uh, located themselves in Hood River because at the time there were already three breweries in Portland. And so they felt that it was already, a, the market was pretty much covered there and if they wanted to sort of be the brewery that local people would go to, they had to go somewhere else. Well these days of course there are dozens of breweries in Portland. There are dozens of breweries in Bend. There are dozens of, brewery, dozens of breweries in, you know, all over the place. Boise, Kansas City. and. Um, you know, I think uh, it, it isn't to be assumed that just because there are a lot of breweries someplace that they can't, that the, the right sort of project can't be uh, the one that takes off. Uh, I, once again, I'd like to stress that uh, differentiation is something that uh, we want to encourage. Uh, I think, you know, in order to uh, distinguish yourself uh, with regard to raising money and also just doing business, you have to have a pretty uh, well thought out and pursued plan. Um, I gave a talk at the National Home Brewers Conference last year in which I uh, cooked each one of the chapters of my book down to sort of an aphorism, uh, urging, you know, various things in a, I mean, having to do with the crowded market, uh, everything from uh, uh, recognizing the bandwidth difficulties of distributors to honing a concept to, you know, making sure that you squeegee less than your competitors on a properly constructed floor. So there's a lot of opportunity uh, to be recognized here. All right. Um, one, one thing Dick and I had been talking about is uh, when, when I was back in Seattle working at Pyramid, uh, we reflected upon how beer was marketed back then versus how it's been marketing now. And as new entrants into the industry, it's, it's essential to hop on board the social media wagon immediately um, due to the, the cost effectiveness of it. Um, competing against someone like AB InBev um, can't be done unless you go grassroots and tap into your local markets. Um, so we're going to address some of those strategies and again it comes back to differentiation and you'll probably hear that, that theme quite, quite often through here but with all the new entrants in the market um, you're going to need to make yourself a little bit different and we can talk about numerous ways to do that whether it's the product, your location, um, sustainability, there's a lot of different things to incorporate in your business. Yeah, as Aaron mentioned, social media of course these days is just table stakes. You know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, such things really didn't exist and now there are new opportunities all the time. Uh, not everything has to cost a lot of money, as he also said that, uh, you know, it's super cost effective. You can do a lot of that stuff for free. Uh, also, there are opportunities with guerrilla marketing, you know, things, events and things like that, which also helps you to hone your concept. Uh, and then as far as growing your business, uh, there are different aspects of that too to be treated. Um, and I think it's important to stress that you really have to have your sort of growth patterns uh, realized from the inception of your business, from the inception of your business plan. Uh, and then also, in other, other ways, obvious ways of growing your business, not just increasing your, uh, your, the, your, the sales of your beer and all that stuff, but uh, there are different ways of expanding. You know, uh, you, I think one thing that, uh, that we'll also go over too in some of the equipment related areas is maximizing, figuring out how to maximize your equipment. Uh, make the most beer you can with what you've got before you uh, decide to expand. And then we'll take a look at different ways of expanding, whether it's uh, you know opening, opening a second pub or just getting more equipment uh, or entering into some sort of a production agreement with another brewer. So there are lots of different ways of doing all this stuff. Um, many of you are probably aware that this type of industry is highly, highly regulated 
and that landscape is shifting all the time um, on, a, on a federal, state uh, level, and even in some in some areas, um, I have the experience of working with a company that that went into uh, the state of Maryland, and they didn't realize that there was also a county tax, which they didn't know about until after the fact, and they already had the facility there, so it, it greatly impacted their their finances for that location. So, doing your homework and knowing about your particular location in the country is paramount to being successful and and getting some true costs, um, which is going to affect, of course, your break-even point. Um, what, what do you have to say, Dick? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are many layers of, uh, of permitting, many layers of taxes, uh, and I think uh, you know we'll be able to make people aware of the, all, the, all the different compliances that have to be gone through, from label approvals and uh, the licensing, basic licensing to get the place open. Uh, and as you also said, the, the different levels of taxes. I mean, there's some places where there's city taxes as well. I mean, uh, it varies location to location. Um, another thing I think that's uh, important to cover, since we're uh, mentioning legal things, uh, you know, when do you need a lawyer? Uh, what do you need a lawyer to do? You know, in, in the initial stages, maybe just to do a draw up a partnership agreement or a you know sales. Uh, sorts of uh, things to establish legitimacy that way. But there are a lot of things to be aware of and, and they once again they don't all have to cost a lot of money. It's, it's important to plan when you need to bring in that kind of expertise. So uh, there's a, a, this, this on the surface this seems like kind of a boring area but it's essential and you have to go through it and it's a good way of giving yourself sort of a sort of a reality check and a, a recognition of where you are in your plan. All right, I think that wraps it up for our, uh, our slides there. All right, thank you, you guys. I appreciate it. Um, any questions? Um, so we, we have a few minutes set aside now for our Q&A. We're running a little bit late, but um, I think we can stay on for a couple more minutes and take some questions. A few of you have um, typed in some questions in the chat window, and I just want to encourage anybody else who has questions to go ahead and do that. And um, I can go ahead and read the questions out loud, and we can figure out who can answer. Um, let's see. So before I do that, I wanted to do a quick shameless plug of our other brewing courses, um, which are coming up. Um, we have the Brewing Analytics Beer Proficiency coming up in, um, in the late spring, early summer. Uh, we also have a craft cidery startup workshop. Um, and we are going to be doing a webinar on that um, in, at noon. And we can go ahead and type in. Um, the registration link for that into the chat window for anybody who would like to join. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead to the question page and um, it looks like we have a, a couple of questions. Um, the first is from, from Philip and he's asking um, about the online portion, if the three hours of this are um, going to be live or if they are um, basically students can take them whenever they want. And the answer to that is that you can take them whenever you want. They will not be live uh, online sessions. So um, those courses, the online portion will be available um, starting April 21st, and you'll be able to go through at your own leisure. Um, and it should be about three hours per week. Um, I also have another question. Um, go to the slides. Mm -hmm. Will we be receiving a copy of these slides afterwards? Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually recording this session, um, so it'll be audio and video recorded, and we will have that posted up on our website uh, for the, the website for the Craft Brewery Startup Workshop 2 course um, starting early next week. So you can expect to see that soon. We also will send out a notification to those people who have signed up for this webinar when the slides are available. Um, I have another question. Um, how are our ideas and thoughts and other intellectual property protected if we are sharing these concepts with others in class and over the digital environment? Um, I'm going to let Aaron and Dick take that one, and I'll go ahead and forward that to you guys so you can read it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that, that brings up a very interesting point, and I think one of the strengths of our whole movement, the way this whole thing has been able to happen, is because we have such a, a great and high level of cooperation, conviviality, and trust. Uh, obviously, uh, 
you know, anytime you open your mouth to talk about any kind of concept or idea, you're running the risk that somebody else is going to run with it and riff, riff off of it. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's really something that we need to worry too much about. I mean, I do think we're running into greater uh, sort of trademark issues all the time. You know, we all, we share so much common experience that, that, it, that we're liable to be naming our beers the same things and, and all that kind of thing. And I think we have to be self-policing. Uh, rather than continually taking each other to court. Um, but I don't know. I think it's possible to express oneself without being too concerned about that kind of stuff. Uh, but, but, uh, but I think it's worth bringing up. Uh, thank you, Dick. Um, let's see. I've got another question. Um, can you attend the advanced class prior to the workshop one? Um, and that's, that's a really great opportunity for me to talk a little bit about the differences between uh, Craft Brewery Startup Workshop 1 and Craft Brewery Startup Workshop 2. Um, one is going to be offered in September in Bend, Oregon, and that is more for students who are kind of starting to think about, oh wow, is, maybe I want to open a brewery, what do I need to do for this? Um, Craft 2 is set up for people who are starting down the track and are hoping to open within a year or so, they're starting to get a plan in place. So that's what this this particular course will be for. And that's the one that's going to be the hybrid that will be in April and May in Portland. Great question. Um, another question asking um, if we'll be going over issues regarding yeast production and brewing troubleshooting as well. Um, this course is focused more on entrepreneurship, however, um, it is a course taught by a ton of brewers, so I think that if you did want to ask questions on the side, and if that did, that might be a topic that does come up. So um, it's not necessarily about the production of brewing; um, it's more on the side of entrepreneurship. But there will definitely be talk about production as well, of course. Um, and yeah, we will go ahead and provide the, uh, I have a question about if we're going to be providing the link to the Craft Cider Workshop, and we can go ahead it's and do chat. that. It's in the chat window for you, actually. Um, will we be offering this workshop again and when? Um, the plan is that we'll be offering this annually. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have a beginner uh, level, we also have an advanced level. You don't have to do the beginner level before you take this one. Um, but um, we're planning to offer the beginning in September every year in Bend and the advanced in Portland in, uh, in the spring, just like this year. Let's see. The cost for the course um, is $11.75 plus registration fees, uh, $50. So the total cost for the course is $12.50. Um, great question. Uh, do we have any other further questions from anybody? If you if you don't have any questions at this time, please feel free to contact us uh, via the phone number or the, um, the email address that's posted on this slide. Um, you can also find out more about all of our beer courses at uh, pace.oregonstate.edu backslash beer. 